I had gotten this uh, probably in the mid to mid to late 90s is when I got this line of credit. It was from a, a very large bank, um, and I never used it. Um, I had it for safekeeping. I put the checks, uh, they mailed the checks to me and all the agreements. I put them in a file. The checks were still sealed in the envelope, and I put them in a, in a folder and forgot about them pretty much. I knew they were there, but I mean, I pretty much never had to use them, and that was a good thing because it meant my business didn't have any uh, monetary problems. Uh, so then, um, in early, I think it was uh, 2001, um, I got a phone call, um, and basically it was from the bank, and they wanted to know why I hadn't made my first payment on my line of credit. And I asked them what they were talking about, and they said that your first payment of uh, approximately $500 was, was uh, almost 90 days overdue. And I told them I didn't know what they were talking about. And they asked me if I had a line of credit with them. I said, yes, I did, but I never used it. And uh, they said, well, we have here that you've borrowed almost $87,000 on this line of credit. And I said, I've never used the line of credit. And they said, well, you've drawn three checks here uh, on this line of credit over the last um, 40 days. So... The um, my personal banker, uh, one of the my vice pres presidents of the bank, and one of their security people came the next day uh, to visit me, and uh, I told them exactly what I had. So they came in. I showed them the file. I showed them the unopened uh, envelope with checks. Uh, when they had done their research. Uh, before they came to meet with me, uh, they knew something was wrong. What had happened was the number, uh, you know, the little number on my line of credit had been reprinted on another check with somebody else's name, okay? And this person had drawn three checks. Um, each check was just under uh, $30,000. So I signed an affidavit, basically, that I had nothing to do with it. I had no knowledge of where the money went. I had, you know, it basically it was just a declaration of in, in, uh, innocence, and I signed it. And pretty much that was the end of it for me. Fortunately, um, my credit was, you know, not ruined. Um, my line of credit was reestablished uh, with a different number and everything like that. And uh, and I was fine afterwards. The FBI got involved in this, and this was a huge sting operation. And these people went into their database and searched for people that had lines of credit that were there, established, but rarely used. And so um, when they would find cases like mine, and there's a lot of other customers at the bank like that that have these emergency lines of credit, um, then they would then sell these numbers, and then they would in turn uh, create some checks with this number on it to draw on the line of credit. And these guys were smart. They went and they found um, some people that could cash large checks without a lot of suspicion. And these guys uh, were brought into their little scheme. Uh, they wired the money overseas and was never seen again. According um, to Bank One, uh, they lost $5 million uh, that was never recovered. They were able to take some of these guys, uh, get them to uh, talk, and they were able to arrest quite a few of these guys and put them in jail. But basically, um, I was a victim, um, but uh, fortunately for me, I was a short-term victim uh, and the bank um, totally covered me. Uh, I think uh, in my defense, uh, the best thing I did was I kept a folder with all of uh, my things in it, and I was able to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I had never used the numbers of the checks. And so um, basically that's the story.